All right, we got two viewers. Chelsea Adams is uh, she's going to miss out on Thirty Rock for this uh, this wonderful presentation. DJ Bubble Love, I saw you missed the Baton Rouge traffic so much last night that uh, you just decided to go sit in traffic about three o'clock this morning, huh? TJ, how you doing? Sarge. Are you in the bubble bath? Because I, uh, I had to get out for the uh, to host this thing. Luke Nick. How's it going, Damon? Smiling Karen. Michael Hanley. We got Teal on. We're up to 15, so I guess this is... And then somebody saw my ugly face and they decided to drop off, so we're down to 13, but... uh. So let's uh let's go ahead and rock and roll on this thing. Oliver's on. Yep, Oliver made it. <laughs> um so uh as the push text and Facebook notification said today, we are uh we're going live with mm -hmm. uh with Operation Port Vincent tomorrow and uh Normally, we'd name, name these things Mission. You know, we've had Mission Moripaw. We've had um, Mission Ascension. Mm -hmm. We've had, I think we've had Mission Priority One. But we decided to, yes, I, uh, I'm click-clack to the max loop, Nick. Um, but we decided to roll with Operation Port Vincent. It was a genius marketing idea um, because... On Monday, I said, man, why can't we just call this one Operation Port Vincent? And uh, everybody's like, sure, whatever. And it took until Friday for somebody to say something about OPV. And I finally got to say, I'm down with OPV. I've been waiting all week to, uh, to drop. I'm down with OPV. Yeah, you know me. And uh, so I'm going to ask you, are you down with OPV tomorrow? And... Uh, and we'll definitely be asking that at the end of this thing. So, so Operation Port Vincent. Uh, if you don't know, if you're not from the area, uh, Port Vincent's a pretty small town. It's, uh, it's a town of about 500 people. And many, many of the people in Port Vincent are elderly. And it's exactly what we've been talking about since day one with this thing. The least, the last the lonely and the lost. Um, you know, I live in Baton Rouge. Everybody saw Baton Rouge on the news, um, what coverage there was. Everybody saw Denham Springs. There are a lot of communities around this, this area that got no mention whatsoever about uh, TFAB. By the way, I saw what you got rolling tomorrow, uh, coming up and... Uh, you know, props to you for sure. We got T Fab's like the volunteer whisperer. She's got some. Uh, she's got some volunteers coming in, but but yeah. So so Port Vincent wasn't on the news. It wasn't talked about. You know, I remember watching the the live feeds that night on WAFB and mm -hmm. and uh, WBRZ and and as I watched them, you know, there wasn't a lot of talk about Port Vincent and. Um, you know, it, it greatly impacted this area. Um, so, so we've got a list tomorrow of, uh, you know, a dozen houses. And we're going to get out uh, 8.30 tomorrow morning at the community center. And we're going to rock. We're going to rock Port Vincent. We're going to change lives in Port Vincent. And um, we're going to put that community back together and... Wow, my, my pastor Brady's watching, and, and Brady, is as bad as Chris is on these things, I'm going to be even worse, I'll, I'll assure you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so Port Vincent tomorrow is, uh, it, we're going to change, we're, we're going to go in there, and uh, the volunteers are, uh, are going to change through, uh, you know, through what God has blessed us with in this, uh, in this organization. We started today with like three volunteers, four volunteers, something like, uh, something like that and you know we're up to 32 today 
and uh, as strong as that impact was between you know eight o'clock this morning and and five o'clock the need is still great and um you know we've got need for hundreds of volunteers seven days a week and so if you can volunteer you know challenge yourself come out and volunteer we've got people now coming back for a second time we've got a crew and in fact i talked we talked about them last time on the the video that i did um we've got a crew out of tifton georgia that's coming on back coming back to louisiana they're going to love our neighbors so um you know we've got people that are that are coming they're seeing the impacts that they're making and seeing the impacts that that are being felt throughout the community and they're coming back for uh for seconds for round two for round three so um you know thanks to to that crew from tifton georgia we've got a crew coming from uh blue cross and blue shield and uh that's going to be a big number um we haven't quite got the the final number on that yeah the the georgia crew is going to have 100 people that's right tfab um so they came with 20 and they're coming back with 100 so exactly right captain morgan they're they're coming back five times deeper five times stronger than they were and there's still just as much need here as there was when they came the first time and you know when we when we talk about the need you know it kind of hits home because it's it's right in many of our backyards um i live in the shenandoah area of baton rouge and um if you remember mm -hmm. one of the epic videos that kind of came out around the the time of the floods was um david fong and he uh he was the young man with the cajun navy whether he was affiliated with the cajun navy or he was just out rescuing people in his boat uh david was the young man that um on south tiger bend uh road came across the miata and the miata was face down uh water was up above the um the convertible top and you know you, you hear somebody screaming and the thing you remember about about it is they're trying to poke a hole through the top and David jumps in and uh, pulls pulls a lady out of a Miata and, and, and then saves her dog too. And and that happened on, on South Tiger Bend, which is literally as I drive out of my neighborhood and go to work every day, I drive down South Tiger Bend. Many people drive down South Tiger Bend. You know, the other thing about South Tiger Bend is um, you go about five blocks up from where I live and there's people living in tents. There are families, there's six tents laid up in a, in a front yard. And I really didn't know that, uh, um, Olive. But uh, yeah, so there, there's people living in tents, uh, you know, right around the corner. So there is so much love that needs to be shared in the community and we need you not only do we need you to be down with opv but we need you every other day we need you in baton rouge we need you in ascension we need you in saint gabriel we need you in gonzales and prairieville and denham springs and Amit, and tick fall building wheelchair ramps can somebody help me build a wheelchair ramp tomorrow does anybody know of somebody who can hook me up and teach mm -hmm. me how to build a wheelchair ramp i i've said i can do it but you know, as we dig into this thing, it's probably beyond my skill set. So, uh, so who can help me this weekend build a wheelchair ramp for somebody changing lives? Uh, Private First Class King is on. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, exactly right, Luke Nick. Lafayette. You know, there's parts in Lafayette that the water is still not gone down. There's parts in our backyard that water is still not gone down. And and as I think about what drew me to the Cajun Army, you know, about I go to church with Chris, and about two weeks before the storms, we had a, a pastor, Todd Rossnager, um, who gave a sermon on mission fields. And in that, in that sermon, he talked about where is your mission field? You know, sometimes mission fields, we think about them as overseas and, 
and uh, I've been on some of those trips. I've you know been to Venezuela and seen seen great things and doing mission work o overseas. But you know what Todd challenged us was what if your mission field's in your backyard? And um, you know I'll tell you after the storm, you know I kind of thought I was going to go about my day. Um, you know Monday was I had to go a different way to work. But, you know, I still was going to go to work and uh, resume my normal activities. And, you know, a guy, uh, Chris King, gets on this, face, this, uh, this Facebook Live and starts talking about the Cajun Army. And, um, you know, as I start thinking about going about my normal day, I just realize how many people don't have a normal day that Monday after the storm. How many people couldn't make it to work? We had three people at my office who could even make it into work the the Monday after the storm and then Tuesday and uh, you know Tuesday evening my sister-in-law calls me from Valley Alabama and she says hey we're coming down we got a trailer load of supplies uh, we want to gut houses um, you know so I pick up the phone and call Chris and you know Chris has something lined up for us and even going into that I was like yeah we'll do this once and and uh, you know I'll feel we'll feel really good about ourselves and and it just wasn't enough. You know, anybody who's done gutting, and in fact, Trisha and I were talking about this tonight. Once you've done it, it's it's addictive. You just want to keep doing it and doing it and giving. And it's hard to pull back and stop from wanting to be out there and, uh, and making an impact. And we certainly see it in a lot of the volunteers that we have come back over and over and over again. You know, I think of Regina, uh, uh, two Saturdays. <laughs> I don't know if I went, uh, I had a phone call come in, so I don't know if it dropped, but, uh, but two Saturdays ago, Regina and I are out, uh, pulling, um, insulation out of a house that's, you know, elevated up 15 feet or so. And, and, and I, I, I see every day Regina saying, I'll be there. God willing, I'll be there. God willing. I mean, it, it she has not stopped. Um, David. David Flicker. I mean, every day he's showing up at, at dispatch site to uh, to be out there and love and serve his neighbor. So, you know, I think I think what I see is, is that same feeling that I had after we did the first house. Um, it's just addicting. You want to get out there and serve, and you want to get out there and help. And the good thing about that is there's plenty of needs to help. And and you know we've still got needs hundreds of needs deep um that we've got to find help for so i'm going to say it again not just tomorrow are you down with opv but are you down the rest of the time because we need you we want you to roll with us so we're going tomorrow to roll in port vincent and make an impact and change lives the least the last the lonely and the lost and um in, in port vincent like we said it's not an area that's been talked about it's not on the map it's not one of the areas where there were crews from uh cnn setting up when when they were here so let's go and help this community that is in desperate need 500 people we can roll that but we need you we've got 32 people let's have 100 people show up tomorrow we got king gravies coming out they're going to be cooking it up at Parker's Grocery, and uh, Chris King is actually going to give the uh, the blessing tomorrow at 11 a.m. So not only do you get to come out and meet Chris King, uh, but you get to come out and eat some good food from Cajun Gravy. You get to come out and love your neighbor, and I promise you, just do it once, and that's all you're going to want to keep doing. It's all it's going to consume you. All you're going to think about is how can I get out and serve? And, uh, you know, I think about, um, as, as Chris and I uh, started talking when I initially said, hey, let me help out with this thing. You know, last night I made a statement that there's not really room to, uh, to dip your toe in the water. And it's not even just that there's not room. You don't want to dip your toe in the water. Like I, like I keep saying, once you dip your toe, your, your toe in the water, you want to just jump in and you want to keep going. So, so, you know, Chris and I start talking the Sunday after we got the first house. That's the Sunday after the storm. And, and I say, hey, man, give me a book of business to manage. 
and uh, Chris, Chris, not letting me just dip my toe in the water, sends me about a three-page email, and it says, you're the captain of the needs team, and here's your responsibility. And I'm like, all right, let me look at the sheet. And at the time, we had 100, 115 people on the needs sheet. And he says, you and this, this other person, you guys are going to be... Uh, you guys are going to be working the, the need sheet. And it was as easy as I'll start at the top, you start at the bottom, and we'll meet in the middle. And, uh, you know, Karen, how many people, if you can type in maybe, how many people do we have on the need sheet today? 400? 300? And, and the list continues to grow. And, uh, and, and so, you know, this is one of those things where now over 700 so see i've i've been out of the need sheet for a while so we've got over 700 people that still need your help need our help need your friends help so share the video um share share our web page you know ask for volunteers ask for people from your church ask for people from your work come out and help and and like i said it's not one of those things where you want to or you can just dip your toe and you got to jump in and and I promise you, once you jump in and commit to this thing, it's it's going to consume you. It's all you're going to want to do is to be out there and to serve and love your neighbor. 700 people. And Todd, I uh, I don't know if you were on, but I do appreciate, I, I talked about a little bit earlier, I appreciate the sermon that you gave that really kind of stuck out to me about this, about your mission fields uh, that are in your backyard. And, and our mission field, there is no doubt, is in Ascension Parish, is in Livingston Parish, is in... 30% of the state of Louisiana that was impacted by this thing. And even if people have gotten back up on their feet, there there's still need to love them, to help them, to get them supplies, to get them food. And some of the people may not ask for help, but we got to keep being there and we've got to keep showing up and helping folks. So 30% of our state, and, and I'm going to tell you some of the inspiring things that I've seen throughout the time, uh, my time with the Cajun Army has been you know, the admin team, and we talk a little bit about the admin team, we've got people from, uh, we've got a lot of folks from Baton Rouge. And, you know, this is, this is we're here. This is something we, 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 we have to care about because we're living in it. But we've got folks serving from Florida. We've got folks serving from Alabama. We've got folks serving from California, from Michigan, um, Texas, and the thing about that that's so beautiful to me is they're just as consumed in what they're doing to drive the mission, to serve their neighbors, to, to set up a demo crew, to set up a volunteer, to set up housing, to coordinate something, to make a phone call, to just tell somebody they love them. They're just as consumed as the people who are out there. France, yep, Arizona. They're, they're just as consumed as the people who are out there doing the gutting. And there's no doubt the generals of this thing are on the front line and they're serving their neighbors and, and they're the representation of, of this organization and this movement. Um, but, but there's a lot of people that are given a lot of time and a lot of energy to help move this thing forward and help put people in the right place and line up a meal and help somebody find housing or, or, or just land a demo crew that, that really... You know, the news isn't covering this in, in a lot of the places that we mentioned, and it could be easily forgotten. So, you know, I want to thank those people that are here to love and serve our community, my community. And, uh, you know, one day, uh, I hope it's not for a long time because I hope you guys don't have to go through what this area is going through. But when you need us, we're going to be there to serve you too. And, uh, you know, I, I just think, I, I keep thinking about Tifton, Georgia. They, they came with 20 people two weeks ago, and they're coming back with 100 people. And, you know, I, I hear the feedback around everybody who, whether you're affiliated with this thing and just, just uh, on the page, or whether you're out there demoing, or whether you're kind of in the back, back, uh, back of the scenes doing, uh, behind the scenes doing the admin stuff, you know, there's a lot of people that are drawn to this mm -hmm. nightly broadcast every single night. And... Um, you know, that's what got me. And and Chris King, the Saturday after we went demoed, uh, Chris King's on here, and I could see it in his face, and I said, man, I'm going to run this race with him. And, and you're right, it is a marathon, um, and, and I'm looking forward to running it, which we got to start running the other race too. But, uh, but yeah, so 
this this thing is is really inspired me it's changed my life i told chris a, a week or two ago that i really don't know that i was living before i got involved with cajun army and uh i feel like i've it's opened my eyes to my neighbor it's opened my eyes to my community it's really opened my eyes to the goodness of man and uh you know as i thought about the scripture that uh that i wanted to kind of talk about and share tonight um you know the least the last the lonely and the lost just keeps playing over and over in my mind and um you know there's a uh there's a story that jesus tells in in matthew um chapter 25 and it starts at verse 31 and it says when the son of man comes in all of his glory and all the angels with him he will wait and sit on his throne in heavenly glory all the nations will be all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people from one another as shepherds separate sheep from goats he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed by my father take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me something to eat i was thirsty and you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothing, clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And, um, Chris, I thank you for, uh, for challenging me in this, uh, in this Cajun Army thing because, um, you know, there's no doubt that in my heart, the, the first couple days after, uh, after this flood, I was one of the least. I was definitely one of the lost. And uh, you challenged me. You challenged me to jump right in and jump all the way in over my head. And uh, and I thank you for that. And I thank God for uh, inspiring you to to do that because I very easily could have gone through this thing and not thought about my neighbor. I could have just kept kept about my way and thought about work, thought about what I had going on. But but you didn't let me. And and God wouldn't let you let me. And I appreciate that, and, and thank you for that. Um, so again, I want to challenge you. That that's something you got to feel in your heart and in your conscience. And I want to challenge you to, you know, to think about that as it relates to you. And I'm I'm telling you from my heart, I was probably going to sleepwalk through this thing like I have a lot in my life, and uh, and this would not this this was something that that God wouldn't allow me to just sleepwalk through. And Nick and Josh and Chris, you guys started an amazing thing here. And I thank you guys for letting me be affiliated with it and run this race with you. And this is, uh, this is going to be a huge thing for many years to come. And we're, we're not just going to change lives this weekend. If you're down with OPV, yeah, you know me. Um, you're not just going to change lives this weekend, but you're going to change lives for a long time to come. Because what you live out there every day and what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I don't know where else to end this thing other than um, the prayer, our prayer that we say, the prayer when disaster strikes. And uh, if you'll give me a second, my computer locked because I got to... Uh, Uh, the prayer when disaster strikes. So, <laughs> um, Dear God, we pray for those affected by disaster, those souls who are stranded, lost, or hurt, those who feel lonely and afraid. We lift them up to your heavenly light. Have mercy on them. Shower them with patience and peace. Guide them through the darkness. Create in them great power to overcome and help them trust in your goodness and grace. O oh Lord, Bring out your reliable disciples. Enable them 
to reach out and rescue those in danger and in need. Infuse them with your wisdom and strength and let the Holy Spirit direct their ways. Holy Father, remind us that you washed away our sins with the gift of your Son, Jesus, who bled and died to give us life. Grant us the ability to endure now, to work with and rest assured in your steadfast love. And we give God all the glory and the praise for everything that's been happened, that has happened so far, and everything that will happen. We lift all this up in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you for what you're doing. And I'm going to see you tomorrow in Port Vincent because we're down with OPV. Good night.